So this is the uh, instructional kind of video or PowerPoint for the uh, chemical oceanography practical. So the practical is, is all about nutrients in the deep ocean and what the change in nutrients over time tell us about what's going on in the surface ocean. So hopefully you might remember from the, uh, from the lectures uh, that uh, deep water forms in the North Atlantic and maybe also in the, well it does also form in the Southern Ocean around Antarctica and this brings relatively nutrient poor water from the surface so uh, low concentrations of nutrients and that's because the, in the surface ocean nutrients are, are used up by life and if you export that, that water to depth the deep water starts out with a low concentration so I should just say this is a slice of the ocean at three and a half thousand meters and as the water flows around the ocean it progressively gets more enriched in the nutrients as it stays down isolated from the surface for longer okay and this is because organic material is raining down into it over time and as the organic matter rains down it, it gets respired and it leases it's carbon and it also releases the nutrients the nitrogen and the phosphorus so this practical that, uses um, um, this is uh, a section in the Indian Ocean from south to north this is south this is north um, and uh, we you're given um, six of these sections I should just point out that uh, the potential density anomaly that's the white contours okay and the um, and the parameter it that's in the coloured background is the thing on the on the left here. So sorry, the right, which is oxygen, nitrate, and these are the, the colour scales down here. So in addition to the colour scales, there's also the the black contours. So the black contours and the colour scales are the same. Okay. Um, and the other thing is that when you're going up into the surface ocean, I've taken away the contours because the rates of change there are very high and it would just be black. So when you get to the surface ocean, you'll have to use um, your knowledge of what you expect the surface, the concentrations to be, and also the, the color scale. Okay, so it uh, should be fairly straightforward. Um, so the first exercise is to take a, a slice through your section at 20 degrees south, and I want you to plot up what you think the, the concentration of nutrients will be at depth. Okay, so you should start at zero at the top, and some depth down here, so put depth on a reversed scale, kind of very much like it is on the sketch section here. Okay, so increasing in numbers as you go down and then you need to think very carefully about what your horizontal scale is going to be so what's the maximum nutrient concentration what's the minimum nutrient concentration and you'll have to use the color scale to figure that out okay so so plot the section on there um, use the contours where, where appropriate and use the colors where appropriate and and get us as many data points on there as you need to fully describe the shape of the concentration profile and then annotate that with with um, uh, the processes uh, that, that are causing these concentration variability. So the next part of the practical, um, which is kind of the, the bulk of it really, is to create um, profiles along the flow path of deep water. Okay, so you're gonna, you should know that in the in the, the ocean, uh, in the open ocean certainly, flow paths are along lines of, of equal density. So water will be flowing along in one direction or the other and that's part of the practical to work out which direction the water is going along one of these white lines okay so you need to figure out where the core of, of the deep water flow is and then uh, work out what the concentration is at any point along one of these white lines work out what the concentration is and then plot it on a section okay so your horizontal scale has to be the same for all of the plots and it should be if you make it the same as the the handout that you've given uh, that makes your life a lot easier and then think very carefully about what the the vertical scale is going to be okay so what's the minimum maximum concentration along the white line that you've chosen okay so don't use the full scale okay because the variability in the deep ocean is only a very small amount so you need to expand out the scale to capture all of the variability Okay, so you should do that, you should collect some data, in, and yours should look a little bit like this, but maybe have slightly different uh, profiles. This is just kind of made up. Um, uh, you should also think about uh, collecting more data where you think there's a change in the slope of the, uh, the, the concentration increase or decrease. So you can see here, there's maybe not enough data to determine where you change from this shallow slope here to this maybe steep slope here. We might need some more data in this region here. Okay, so what you need to do, um, then is you need to divide up your um, your profiles into segments, okay? And those segments need to be the same for 
each of the, the the nutrients and oxygen and when you decide on your segments you should you should uh, basically try and get segments where there's a characteristic change okay in each segment so it looks like you a straight line in each segment so there's no changes of slope within each segment and when you do this that should be true for all of your um, uh, nutrients except maybe sil silicon so just when you're picking your segments just consider oxygen nitrogen and phosphorus okay and if you can't do that with three segments if you can't get kind of unique just straight lines in all of the segments then you might have to add more segments but that's not a that's not a problem because you can do that okay the next thing for each segment we want to work out what the change of each of the nutrients is okay so for, for that we, we just you can just read off uh, a, you draw a best fit line through the data for that segment you notice that the segments don't have to actually match up okay you just have to draw a best fit line through the data within that segment and then read off how much the oxygen concentration or nutrient concentration changes for that segment okay now really what we're wanting to work out is the gradient okay and the gradient is kind of the, the change over the kind of like the distance but because later on we're going to be working out ratios of gradients uh, this um, distance over which the concentration changes will be the same for each Kind of parameter for each within each segment so that will cancel out so you can work out the gradients if you want to but you don't need to okay you just need to know the amount change in oxygen and the amount change in um, uh, the nutrients okay so once you've done that what we need to do is compare those ratios of amounts change to what we expect so the first thing to do is you have to balance this equation to work out how much oxygen you expect to get when you respire, um, uh, when you, when you um, <clears throat> how much oxygen you use up when you respire, sort of 106 carbons, or you use up, um, or you, you release 16 nitrogens, or you release one phosphorus. Okay, so what you're looking to do is work out this number here by balancing this equation, um, and then your your ratios of, of n to p. The red field ratio should be 16 to 1. Uh, your ratios of uh, oxygen to nitrogen will be whatever this number is divided by 16. Your ratio of oxygen to phosphorus will be whatever this ratio is, whatever this number is divided by 1. Okay. So you, you get a number of expected. So this is the these are the ratios at which nutrients and oxygen should change in the deep ocean if we're just adding organic matter to the top. Um, the one ratio you're not given uh, is the um, nitrogen to silicon ratio okay and I'm giving you that here so that should be 16 to 15 so that's the ratio at which it's uptaken in the surface ocean um, so you're looking at what ratio it's released in the deep ocean okay so you're going to compare those two and comment on any differences once you've worked out those ratios at which the deep water is increasing you're essentially worked out these these numbers down here so you're working out the ratio at which nutrients and oxygen is being added or taken away by the organic matter falling into the deep ocean okay so the key things is are your numbers what we expect from the redfield ratio so do you get an n to p ratio of 16 or is it higher or is it lower and what does that tell you about what's going on in the surface ocean okay or perhaps another process okay just uh, uh, I guess this is really for the last part um, think about uh, some of the uncertainties in your measurements. So how accurately do you think you have measured these nutrient to oxygen ratios or nutrient to nutrient ratios? Where does the uncertainty come from? And this is kind of, you know, pretty kind of uh, school level kind of science that if you've got two numbers, you know, one number could be bigger than another. But if you're actually making measurements, you need to consider the error, okay? Because it could be that you're getting different values of your best estimates but your uncertainty in those estimates overlaps with kind of the the true value that you're looking for or another value you're comparing it with so you can't say that they're necessarily different so do think about where your uncertainty is coming from okay and that's largely reading off the graph drawing your best fit lines try and quantify how much that will affect the final answer okay so that's uh, the um, that's the practical uh, uh, hopefully you'll be able to work through that and um, 
uh, be able to tell something about how the deep ocean nutrient changes is determined by what is going on in the surface ocean. Okay.